Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm so excited and happy to celebrate with you today my friend, the very brilliant Colin Bedell of Queer Cosmos. Now, Colin is like this phenomenon on Instagram. He is online, he's posting, and people love these reels and these videos that he posts. And you're about to see why he brings this element in that is so intelligent and brilliant, but he really talks about matters of heart from the heart as well. And gosh, his content can be so much fun as well. Well, Colin is coming back to Synchronicity University as part of the September 2022 speaker series where you've got just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class to learn from this caliber of astrologer like Colin Bedell. It truly is incredible. Colin, I'm so happy that you're back. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Nadia. I'm thrilled to be back. And also speaking of synchronicity, I'm in the room where I found your YouTube video for the first time in 2009. I didn't even have the image of ever becoming a professional astrologer, but I was here in my grandmother's guest room when I was watching you speak, and I was just like, wow, this woman has such a command, and she's so warm and lovely. I, I want to hear everything Nadia Shah has to say. And fast forward to 2012, 12 years later, a, few, a, a full Jupiter cycle, and now we're talking. I mean, life is miraculous, isn't it? It's wild. Wow, that's incredible. And I, you know, I remember um, meeting you in 2018 at the UAC conference. Right. And yeah, and I remember you just being in the room and you radiating so much love. And so right away, you caught my attention because you radiated so much love. And then afterwards, you said loving things for just a moment, because there were a lot of people around oh, yeah. at the time. But it's been incredible how I then all of a sudden it seemed like you were online and you were doing your thing and you were being brilliant oh. and we had that connection. So it's just so wonderful to work with you again. Oh, likewise. And speaking of working with you, the last time I worked with you was just a few weeks before the pandemic. The big pandemic, I know, right? <laughs> that was something. Let's yeah, just say was. <laughs> that it was, was a big event. <laughs> the big event of the January 2020. I a lot of stuff went down. However, it yeah. was the precursor to just the perfect thing that could happen, which was isolation. Oh, right? my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the Spoken perfect like thing. a true Aquarius sun sometimes, right? I know, right? But the thing, it's so wild because <laughs> actually, you know what? The outside Same. world, I know we went through a massive change, but in a way, my life didn't go through that big a change because oh my God. already, like I was so used to creating content and being like so personal, yes. having that relationship with yes. the camera, with the audience, yes. Yes. It, it just strengthened that relationship even more. Yeah, it, I mean, it's interesting how that all of us diving into Aquarius energy in an instant, oh, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Saturn conjunct Mars at zero degrees. It was Boom. like, whew, we yep. are in it. We are all going to be working online, uh, yeah. <laughs> social isolation, but digital connection more often than not. I know. Talk about a crash course on Aquarius concepts. But I just, I remember like talking to you and being on that panel of Starstruck, hope, hosted by Ophie Adu, one half of the Astro Twins. That was like oh, the kind Astro of- Astro Twins. We love Astro uh, Twins. We yes. love them. Yeah, that was kind of like the precursor of here we are now. Full circle moment. We're closing the loop. We're coming back together. I love it. <laughs> I know, right? We are coming back together because you and I both will be at the ESAR conference yes. in Denver this just month in August. Yes. And so that'll be really exciting. I'm oh, sure to meet everybody to in you. person. Yeah, we'll get to hug again, which yes. will be really nice. And then what's going to happen in March is just as Saturn leaves Aquarius, here comes Pluto in Aquarius. I know you're so, like, I can't catch a break, honey. <laughs> it's so fascinating, isn't it? Like, I mean, all these people are like, yeah, okay, social restriction, Saturn's leaving. But I'm like, you know, Pluto is about to go into Aquarius as well. I feel like yeah, get comfortable online, people. Yeah. In a way it's, I mean, really, if we're coming down to it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know what? I couldn't agree more. I know, and you're right. We have to sort of say, like, yeah, Saturn might be leaving, but Pluto's joining the party for, you know, I don't know, a 15, 16, time. 17 years. Yeah. I don't like even know first, how long. Well, the first couple of years, it's sort of in and out. But then yeah, altogether, we're looking at a 20-year cycle. Come on. 
20 yeah. years. I mean, I just think so much is going to change, especially yeah. once Pluto meets that zero degree Aquarius point. So much has happened at zero degrees of Aquarius. It's remarkable. Ooh, ooh. Maybe Mars we could see like Saturn. Inter- oh, maybe it could be some like internet healthy cohesion and like the 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 regulation around misinformation. But I don't want to get too optimistic about a Pluto transit. Oh, yeah, no, right, exactly. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, maybe this could be relatively helpful, you know. But I'm like. Uh, I'll wait on beta breath, but do the best that I can to like. It is God of the underworld. I know, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We'll try. We'll try. Uh, Hold the polarity. Exactly. Talk about polarities. Yes, it is truth and intensity and and really understand the essential of what really matters. Mm -hmm. But the polarity is that uh, you find that out through moments that kind of suck sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> that's the thing right like the moments that really hurt i mean i'll tell you when i we met and we had that joint event in uh, new york city i had um that we had the great conjunction we were literally mm. right under the great conjunction mm. not the great conjunction but it was saturn and pluto at 23 mm. degrees of that's right. capricorn that's right. that was exactly square my 23 degree chiron in the 10th house Yes, oh, that's I mean, creepy. But it was also sextile, my 23, 23 degree midheaven in Pisces. So it was kind of like, okay, Ooh. in a way, it empowered me. In a way, it made me like really understand certain things. But also, yeah, that wounding, you know, oh, Pluto oh. doesn't always, Pluto doesn't really feel good all the time, no. right? Yeah, we don't learn through joy during a Pluto transit. We yes. can learn through joy under maybe Jupiter, sometimes even Saturn. I'll even give Saturn that, but like, damn, Pluto, not so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully if there's some positive things happening in the chart, and yeah. thankfully, I also think a lot of us are going to understand how things are changing for us in our lives Mm -hmm. with that Pluto just stepping into Aquarius and Mm -hmm. then stepping out. And so we'll get to see if we like which way the energy is going, you know, Mm -hmm. so we realize like, okay, maybe I don't want to be I don't want to continue to be not a nice person, for example. Oh, oh, that would be great. Yeah. Because Pluto shows you that Pluto shows you if you're not being a nice person, if you're not being ethical, that's part of the honesty of Pluto as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking about the the quote by a Mercury and Aquarius, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who said that we're all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. Yeah, I love that idea. And it's so Aquarius to me. And so if we're mean spirited, or we have these kind of power dynamics of subjugation, domination, fear, we're going to probably experience the ramifications of that because if we're in an inescapable network of mutuality and I'm mean-spirited, unfortunately, I'm harming others and I'm doubly harming myself. So we we got to stop kidding ourselves. You know, all minds are joined. So let's let's be a little bit more peaceful towards one another, even the ones we disagree with. Wow. The interconnection of mutuality. The inter... Wow. That's an incredible way to understand it. And the thing is, I know, like coming back to your work... It's so much, there's so much focus on relating to others, right. understanding our relationship. Like uh, when I watch your content and I see mm. these brilliant videos you make, how much wisdom and knowledge you pack into these one minute videos, one and a half minute videos. And so much of it is about understanding the other as a Correct. way of understanding ourselves. It's not about taking on someone else's opinion about us as our own. <laughs> no, it's about being willing to learn from how we are perceiving a particular relation, a particular interaction, and how we can be better as a result. What do you think draws you to that that exploration? Because I think that's part of what makes your work so unique, is that it is so focused on relational in a truly unique way. Oh my gosh. Well, again, I'm just like, I'm blown away that Nadia Shah, the astrologer's voice, who I would hear for hours at a time, just reflected back to me how she interprets my work. Like, whoa, what a moment. What a synchronicity moment. Wow. I think it's a couple of things. Uh, My North Node's in the seventh, just speaking of it astrologically. I have a natal Venus Jupiter conjunction. So I've always been curious about relating and why we either do or don't. And then also, I'm a twin, you know, so I am a student of interpersonal dynamics from the very beginning. Uh, And so I've always just been curious about, yeah, how we can optimize 
relational awareness and relational enactment because the fact of the matter is the sole determiner of our life quality is relationships and this is not me pontificating these are studies conducted long form long, longitudinal adult studies of, of, develop, of development at harvard clinicians know this neuroscientists know this social workers know this and marriage and family therapists know this the quality of our life is determined by the quality of our relationships and so during my Saturn return, as my career was starting to take shape and I was understanding how I wanted to best be a contributor, I was drawn loud and clear to this conversation. And Saturn basically said, this is where you have to uh, contribute. This is what you need to write on. And it's really just transformed the quality of my life. And I'm so grateful for it every day. Yeah. And so the books, I know that you wrote the little book on Gemini, right? Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> Literally exciting. wrote the book on Gemini. <laughs> How so many people perfect. can say that? You know? You're the twin and you wrote the book on Gemini. You are a twin. And you wrote <laughs> That's right. A Gemini, Gemini twin, yeah. literally. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's so interesting because so much of your presentation, the way that you share this openness, this uh, way in which you're able to flow with words and you use your hands like I do as well. I have a grand trine in air, right? Uh, it's so Gemini. Yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> like, I was thinking it was like the Italian American New Yorker in me. You're like, yeah, maybe, but it's you being a Gemini too. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, like I'm with you. I, just before we started, I noticed myself kind of talking like you as well. And I was like, okay. <laughs> And dressing like me. I'm there, telling you, Nadia, I would wear this outfit. Get, girl, you, you look beautiful. You should have. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll we'll plan to do something yeah. at the ESAR conference. Yes. Where we're, we're twinsies. Let's do yes. that. We're twinsies. Gemini twins. Gemini twins. Absolutely. Oh, thank you for saying that. Because I, I also think that could be something that anybody involved in astrology and like personal development would benefit from is uh, introducing a little bit more levity in our work. And just like not taking ourselves so seriously. You know, of course, take the work seriously, take the message seriously, but don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> yeah, right. Like have the reverence for what you do. Uh, and also remember that ultimately we are human beings. Like uh, stay 100%. humble. We don't have to be yes. gods here, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. Right? Yes. Just be humble. Uh, enjoy. Learn through the journey yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that, look, we are wrapping up as humanity some pretty big lessons as we're right. moving into these last degrees of Pluto in Capricorn. And so why not give ourselves that break as well to allow oh. ourselves to encapsulate and understand some key lessons that we've probably been engaged in all of us mm. it's interesting because you mentioned 2008 or 2009 you said you found me that's and right that was very new you know pluto and pluto capricorn, and capricorn. So it's so interesting that now on the other side of it you and i are friends you and i Crazy. are hanging out you're teaching at my school for the side <laughs> what <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I was explaining to my mom today. I was like, "Don't you get it?" And then Jupiter was in Aquarius when I found her, and then Jupiter returned to Aquarius. She is in Aquarius, and the Pluto transit. She's like, "Okay, I think this is a big deal." I'm like, "It's a huge deal." <laughs> so, yeah, right. It is, it, and I like that we're seeing it as like a Pluto progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. Right? See, more synchronicities abound. I love it for sure. And mm -hmm. you, as a Gemini, me as an Aquarius. Um, having Pluto move into an air sign, my hope is that mm. we're able to integrate the truth and transformation in a way that maybe mm. isn't as brutal as it could otherwise be, because mm. I have had a few pretty brutal Pluto transits in my life, mm. and I don't need to go through that again. <laughs> right. What is your what is your sun sign in Aquarius, Nadia? Okay, what so degree? My, yeah, excuse me, yeah, what's degree position? Oh, okay, seven. okay. We got yeah, time, yeah. but it's close. So I've got yeah. a little bit of time, like it's two thousand and 28 that it's going to oh. really hit precise while okay. uranus is trining okay so what, okay what degree is your son three three gemini three. so i'll probably have my uranus conjunction by the time that you have your pluto conjunction is that right yeah oh my goodness oh, uranus conjunct my son i mean everything changed oh, everything okay. changed when that happened okay. yeah like i literally i was a pothead <laughs> That's so Aquarius. You know, right? Can you believe it? I think that's the first time I admitted it on camera. But Welcome. I no shame, no judgment, girl. It's a safe space, right? I literally was a pothead. <laughs> I, I was having a lot of fun. Let's just Good say for you. Good for I you. enjoyed my life. I really, I, 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 I tried out all kinds of mind yes, altering things. And yes. then exactly, Sag Moon, right? And then Uranus came and conjunct my son. And it was like, oh, I'm done. Right. That was it. I got it. 
Yeah. 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 That's, that's it. It's been like, what? It's been almost 22 years since wow. I had a drug or a drink or anything. It literally was like, oh, that's not working for me anymore. No. Yeah, that's not that's not happening. And, and let's be clear: is anything more? I don't care what drug or alcohol we're talking about. What's more powerful than Uranus conjunct your son? Like, exactly. you, you're good on breakthroughs. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you don't need anything else to help you with the breakthrough. <laughs> no. If you've experienced you know, Uranus over your son, you're you're set, honey. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> the 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 insight. Wow, you don't need to see a flower pot turn into a frog in front Never of your again. Eyes. Once is enough, Aquarius, exactly, right? Right. <laughs> but, oh boy, the truth it. of it. Yeah, like it's just so cleansing. It. So listen to this right now as we're talking. This month, August and September, Uranus is stationing on my south node. Whoa. I kid you not, to the degree Whoa. station on my south node. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, how what's you, going on? Yeah, how are you experiencing yeah. that? Well, actually, I'm experiencing it in terms of I am planning to take September off and go to a retreat in Costa Rica. Like, Good for you, honey. Yeah, I'm experiencing it like what would happen if I, you know, I have these amazing people who help me, who are on my yes. team, who work oh, for God, me. Oh, God, they're so helpful. I'm so glad that you thank you for saying that because yeah. they really are amazing people. And what would happen <clears throat> if I just trusted them to take over mm. and and went off and said, look, unless it's really an emergency, and if it is, you can WhatsApp me. But what would happen if I just didn't go online? Like after 16 years as a full-time astrologer, because September 1st will be 16 years, like I just feel like there's something more I have to give. That's how I really oh. feel. Like there's, oh. I, I, it's almost like I need the cleansing so that I can yes. have a different perspective so that Ooh. my astrology and what I share with my audience can improve and become even better. That's Ooh. how I feel. Yeah. Oh, yes. And you know, and I like that it's, I, I, I'm i seeing too with Uranus over your South Node, you know, South Node is the clearing, it's the pause. It's like things that we need to kind of release allegedly or theoretically. And so you're taking this month off so that you can be that generous Taurus giver. Right. So you just explained it so beautifully. Yeah. Whenever I feel like that South Node transit is inspiring a little bit of a, of a sabbatical and a review and maybe learning how to slow down and, and make peace with a little bit of that uncertainty and trusting your team. And then the resource and the brilliance that you can provide once you're done is so Taurus Scorpio access. I love it. I love wow, it. Wow. Yeah. It's the access, right? It Isn't is. hundred percent. A, a planet conjunct the South Node means that it's also aspecting that North Node. So 100%. <laughs> but you know it's Uranus. You don't know which way things are going to go. Uh, no. Like, okay, let's see what happens. Uh, no, and I'm glad you're trusting. Right, it's such a North Node and Scorpio concern of like, can I really trust the people who I work with to help me in my South Node and Scorpio keep my business secure, sufficient, and and beautiful? Yeah. yeah so of right? course you can. Yeah, you got a great so, yeah. team. They're yeah, on I it. do. Oh, thank you so much for that. Because yeah, I do have a lot of trust in them. They're such amazing people. But then also I have incredible teachers as well as mm. part of Synchronicity University. Yeah. Uh, another part of what I do is Superstar. And so that'll be pre-recorded. Right. And then YouTube, I'm going to have other people stepping in and doing videos weekly, uh. monthly. And so that too is a little bit scary, but it's also mm. like, I love other people shining like i just love it i love facilitating other people growing and shining and yes. yeah so if i can do that while i'm away that would be amazing yeah. too and and again i just want to demonstrate and, and acknowledge like that is i think so beautiful i don't think it's as common as i would love to see in places not just in astrology but in in so many industries right but you're such an aquarius son you're like hey step up i'll step back there's more than enough opportunity and exposure to go around like hello aquarius son and i, I just really want to really that. acknowledge that yeah because yeah. i i learned that from you from ophi a dude one half of the astro twins right and you know i'm 33 so i'm in a I'm in an interesting generational marker here. I have a lot of, you know, Pluto and Sagittarians who are wanting to become professional astrologers. And I'm applying what I learned from people like you and Ophi, Jessica Lignato, another wonderful example of that, Sam Reynolds, Mecca Woods. I have seen them kind of bring the elevator back down, so to speak, and just say, okay, here you go. Let me leave the gate open. Um, I just want to say that I think you're a phenomenal example of collaborative, collaborative energy, decency, kindness, uh, opportunity expansion. You do it so beautifully, truly. Mm. 
Thank you. You're I welcome. love you. I mean you make it. me feel so good about myself, and I love I... that about you. Too. <laughs> okay. Of course, I have to. I mean it. I'm of not course. talking. Well, look, I'm not you talking are about all about relational what? stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, you give a lot of love. You're interested in love. Okay, so let let's talk about your course because, yes. or your class rather, your yes. talk that you're going to be doing. You are going to be doing a talk on Mars and Venus. These mm-hmm. two are often at a polarity, right? That's They're right. considered right. in terms of a polarity. That's right. So why is that? Talk about that. Well, because I think that not just in astrology, but in American politics and beyond, you know, we are living in a time of deep polarization. And I think who but astrologers who can examine particular theories and behaviors that depolarize and not see them as problems that need to be solved, but just simply paradoxes that need to be managed, right? Who but us can really provide really helpful, complementary, and integrative wisdom? I have never seen a polarity, an opposition, or a paradox in astrology as a blinking red light, ever. Maybe because I am a Gemini, maybe because I am queer, maybe because it was just something that I felt very much in comfort with. And so given the fact that we've had a lot of strong fixed uh, transits that might see oppositions, polarities, and contradictions as issues and concerns, right? Like with the Saturn-Uranus squares and all of that, you know, I'd really love for us to first work with the premise that what if change is part of the tradition? And what if it's not either or, but both end and not only, but also? And if we can hold those conversations that work like containers, those containers then provide instruction and steps on what to do next so that people can feel less polarized in their thinking individually, and then more relational and compromising in their behaviors relationally. So that's the goal. And I'm going to go through Venus, Mars, and then all the polarity pairs, because honestly, Nadia, that's what converted me into really experiencing astrology so beautifully was I'm a Gemini sun and my deep relationships with Sagittarius suns. When I felt that, I was like, whoa, there is something to this experience, this model. And I would ask others like, oh, you're an Aries. What's your partner? Libra. And then next thing I know, we're talking about the relationship for three and a half hours, you know? So it was that polarity and opposition aspect in astrology that really helped me understand there's something to this. And so this is the first time I'll be teaching on it. Wow. And it's amazing how when you consider polarities, how they actually hold the energy of the other. Just like right now we were talking about the polarity of the nodes. Yes. And so, yes. And so how... Let me ask you something. So I know that if we just look at Mars and Venus as yeah. polarities, planetary yeah. polarities, right? Yeah. It's almost like I've always thought of it as receptive and active. Great. But I'm sure that you have this other layer of understanding to it as well. Yeah, because what, and in, in, in the lecture, I will actually not even be talking about the planets per se. I'll be talking about the stories among the signs, right? Mm-hmm. So for example, Aries ruled me, Libra ruled we. Then what? How's that supposed to work? Right. Yeah. So even just talking about those the, the the connections between them, and that's what's going to yeah just provide some strategies to affirm the fact that Aries has legitimacy, and its liability is where Libra has its legitimacy. Right. Libra's proclivity clashes against Aries' vulnerability. Then what? Wow. You know, and and for all of the sex, you know, Taurus and Scorpio. Taurus wants security. Scorpio says, well, I take a stand for the unknown. Can you find security in the unknown, Scorpio? And then Taurus looks at Scorpio and says, well, can you be really clear on what you're committing to? Because your withholding doesn't help me understand what happens next. So can we move from the gridlock and the impasse to actually find some win-wins here? You know, so I just kind of want to tell those stories from the place of these are not oppositions, i.e. either or A or B, black and white, this or that. It's not only but also, it's both and. And if we can hold that lens, I can really see transformation individually, relationally, communally, politically, globally, et cetera. Wow. And so just like you did for Aries, Libra, Taurus, Scorpio, can we go through the rest of the signs? Because I would just really oh, love sure. the people watching sure. to get value out of this. Quick line. Feel like they yeah. saw themselves. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to the Gemini Sag axis. <sighs> Oh yeah, my God! I, know. I could, I could cry. Yes. I know. I could cry just thinking about it. My Sag besties, my Sag cousins, my beautiful Sagittarians. Right. Well, it was actually my Sag best friend who said, "I don't know, Colin. I think you see the tree. I see the forest." And isn't that so true, right? I think Gemini is the uh, zodiac's journalist. Who, what, where, and why? What's the scoop? 
right? And then Sag's first question is now, how do I take the data that Gemini provided and turn, turn it into wisdom? make it universally applicable. I think Taylor Swift actually does a phenomenal example of that in her songwriting. She has this beautiful line in her song, All Too Well, where she says, and there we are again in the middle of the night, we're dancing around the kitchen in the refrigerator light. So it's this astonishingly personal, detailed lyric that was so universal and connected millions to that song. Very sad. Here's my little experience, Gemini, but let me make it into a pop song that's 10 minutes long and everyone's going to talk about it, right? Gemini Sag. Cancer Capricorn. I think that cancer does take a stand for initiating the subjective emotional landscape in the sense of this is what I'm feeling and this is what I'm experiencing. And then Capricorn says, that is real, but is it true? That is what you're feeling, but is it true? Right? It's the real but not true cognitive device that clinicians use. And I think that Capricorn does inspire cancer to exercise emotion regulation. Okay, you might be feeling activated. And so you're just going to react from the wound the whole time? Or can we have a conversation about moving from maladaptive childhood patterns to adaptive wise adult decisions? And then cancer says to Capricorn, that's real nice. But if you're not talking to me in a tone that I feel not defensive with, <laughs> where are we going to go? Right? So how do I how do you improve your your approach? And how do you initiate emotional self disclosure seagull? Because you have one half of a fishtail that can theoretically swim with the best of me, you want to give that a try, you just climb in the mountain 24 seven. Right? And then I love Leo and Aquarius, because I think it's one of the most, I think necessary right now, in so far as it is the creatives, the artists, the spiritualists, and the mystics that can really capture collective pain and ultimately deliver us from it. You know, there's nothing like going to a concert or being a part of a collective assembly. And you're a part of something so much bigger than you because someone had the audacity to be creative and sing a song or get a dance party started. Like there's something about Leo ruled, cre you know what I mean? Yeah, look at you. Totally. <laughs> Talk to yes. me, Leo Aquarius. Go ahead. What do you know, think right? about that? <laughs> is that true for you? I know, right? Like, of course, I'm thinking about how healing it is to gather in that way, Ugh. to listen to an artist where you Ugh. love and you can feel all the love pouring at the 100%. artist. But it's also being shared like energetically in the space. Yes. And, yes. you know, I, I'm just thinking about how powerful it is not only to give from the heart, but then how that really does. It, it, it's a healing balm to the masses, really, literally the masses. To the masses, right? It's that famous Marianne Williamson quote. It's not our light that it's not our darkness that most frightens us. It's our light. When we subconsciously liberate ourselves from our own fear, we invite everyone else to do the same. Yeah. And when you see a high-minded Leo energy walking into the room, who maybe historically and socially has every reason to feel disempowered, multiply marginalized, oppressed, and says, that is true, but I'm not going to let that mean the end of my story. I love they're, it. they're just dishing out permission slips, liberating all of us, aren't they? Yeah. Right. I have a Leo father too, so I think I understand that quality. And then Virgo Pisces is fantastic because I think it's the healing of mind, body, spirit, and soul right? Or mind, body, heart, and soul. I think Virgo's concerned with gut health, probiotics. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you waking up early? You know, and we need that. We need uh, personal development advice that's really rooted in grounded evidence and, and habits. And it is in those small steps that we can really transform the quality of our life. But if we're just thinking about the mind and body and not the heart and soul, are we working with 100% of the solution? Enter Pisces right? Who does say to the Virgo, not everything can be logically understood, critically examined, or even vocalized. Some things just have to be felt and experienced with the heart. Does that make it any less important than a probiotic and water with lemon in the morning? No. Mm -hmm. So can we wow. put our heads together and really be the healers of the mind, body, heart, and soul would be Virgo Pisces. And I just, I love the interactions between them. It's uncomfortable. It's not always easy. You know, when the Sag's uh, bow and arrow hits me between the eyes, I'm like, whoa, right? But I know, I know that I need to hear it in that way. And I'm sure it's true for all of the pairs. And yeah, I just think we live in such a polarized either or quality of life that if we can use astrology as a lens to depolarize, whew, what that can do. I know. Yeah. Right? So that's just the kind of broad stroke. They'll have to watch the whole thing because I have books and videos and resources and, and context and citations. So that's just the overarching idea for all I six. I love the citations. Yeah. I'm all about the citations. <laughs> I don't watch other astrologers very much because 
I don't want to ac- accidentally plagiarize somebody. Yeah, right. So I, I say that I don't want to accidentally do that, and that's why I sort of keep away. I'll watch somebody for a few seconds to be like, "Hey, they're good. I want them yeah. on my channel. Let me send them right. an invite or something." Uh-huh. But they have to be different enough for for me for me to be able to actually sit there for more than a minute or so. And so, yeah, <laughs> citations. You speak to my heart when you say citations. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> and you're probably too. Your North Node in Scorpio is like. Tell the truth. Did you get this information from another source? Which is great, you know, but just acknowledge that. Please don't position yourself as the generator of this information. And I think especially, Nadia, for women, for women of color in the United States, especially uh, Black women have been plagiarized extraordinarily frequently. And so there's this movement called Cite Black Women, and it's all about attribution as a social justice device so that people can normalize, hey, this is what I learned from Isabel Wilkerson, uh, Bell Hooks, Sonia Renee Taylor, Audre Lorde, Octavia Butler. I'm not saying this is me. You, you know, know, this still happens on TikTok, actually. Oh, I saw okay. this whole thing about it the other day. I think it was on really? Vice. They shared about how all these black creators, uh, they, they create the dances and things, 100%. and other creators end up picking it up without giving them credit. credit. But just giving them the credit, just credit. tagging them could 100%. change their lives. Like it's just yes. about giving the credit that Where can change still. someone's life. Yeah. Right. And it's it that that this is not new to social media. I mean, this has been going on ever since Black Genius, which has been going on for you know since the dawn of time, but ever since it's been contributing to pop culture, especially. Right. And so it's really important for white creators to be really clear that, hey, I didn't get this information. I didn't just didn't dawn on me. You know, I'm a student of these teachers. And isn't that beautiful? I almost think it like repudiates so many uh, oppressive and, and dominating power structures to say, this is the, the teacher I learned from. And she's a black woman and I'm going to name her. And Sonia Renee Taylor and uh, Brene Brown, two Scorpios, of course, they went into it in this conversation because something that Sonia Renee Taylor said actually got misattributed to Brene Brown. And Brene saw it on Twitter and she was like, I didn't say this. And then she put a call to arms for her community and said, who did? And then they they quoted uh, that it was Sonia Renee Taylor. They had a podcast episode about it, all about the reasons why attribution is essential for anybody who is not essentially a straight, white, cisgendered male. Yeah. And it's Don't so, get me started, though. <laughs> I love that about you. I love that social justice Tangential. part because you know, I don't know if you know this, but when I started off as an undergrad, I started in social justice, right? Of course. That was my Aquarius. major, of course, right? Uh, being me, my dad wanted me to be prime minister of Canada, and he had this plan that first I had to become a human rights lawyer and okay. I could segue that into a career in politics. But I always knew I wasn't going to do that because... Mm. I remember being a little girl and my dad telling me, you're going to be prime minister. And I remember thinking in my head at the time, but the prime minister can't wear whatever they want. Like, <laughs> So I'm dad. <laughs> I knew on a soul level I wasn't going to do that. Right. But then I started off in social justice, but then halfway through I switched to philosophy. Oh, beautiful. Then went to graduate school. Beautiful. It was uh, religious studies. So oh. it's so... Yeah, it's so interesting, eh? How the journey takes you, especially when you're listening to yourself, you end up where you're supposed to end up, really. Uh, Without a doubt. And and I think with astrology, and this is something anybody can learn, you know, it's cumulative. So it's okay if it's if it's a season not to know, you know. The Saturn return is a two and a half year story. You're probably not gonna know before Saturn leaves its natal position. And on top of that, you probably won't know until you're 33. And are we not studying time or are we studying easy bake ovens? Like, hello. You know, we got to we got to be really clear about that. So I love that you were reminding us, like, there is a larger story. It is cumulative. It doesn't occur in a vacuum. Yeah, we're not reading chapter four of a book and thinking we can only we can know the whole book. Having only read chapter four, that's not how this works. I love that you mentioned Saturn. I will say that one thing I really feel is that I actually think the first Saturn square after your Saturn return is perhaps more important than the Saturn return itself. Oh, hot, yeah, yeah, hot take. I'm going to take take here. Say it. No, say it, Nadia. I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> because the Saturn return, right? It's like, okay, yes, you transition from youth into adulthood. Yeah. However, you get to the Saturn square and it asks you to get real. It asks you if the sacrifices you're making are worth it. 
It asks you to do it for its own sake. And if you're expecting a miracle, it's not about that. It's about being a grown up and life on life's terms and to actually demonstrate it. Because Saturn squares always say you can't get what you want right now. Right. And sometimes it makes it very clear, like, look, this is not the pathway for you. Mm. I remember Okay, uh, a little side story. Here. No, we love I, it. We love I it. I know, I know. I remember Saturn was squaring my son. And okay. there was this dude, and I really like this dude. Now, we're going back like 10 years here. I was going to say my, Saturn and Scorpio, right? Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, it was Saturn and Scorpio, exactly. And I remember uh, calling and talking to Michael Barwick, who I think you know. You'll see him at ESAR as well. Yes. So don't worry about that. He's been on my channel and I'm at school so many times. But anyways, I called him and I was like, I want Michael. him. And this guy, what is he doing? No, 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 what's going on? Can you look at the charts? And he looked at Saturn squaring my son and he said, Saturn is square your son. And Saturn was transiting my fifth house too, right? Oh, oh God. <laughs> like, well, we don't love astrology, right? I know, I know. right? <laughs> He's like, you can't get what you want. you want. And you know what? It's so amazing because I learned so much from that experience with uh. him because I remember at the time, going and buying all these candles and incense and things yes. and doing all these rituals. And I was really getting really sick. And I remember realizing that, oh, my God, these are cheap ass candles for giving off gas. <laughs> these are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they were giving off some sort of fumes that were causing me to have like a sickness. And I went, oh, my God, me trying to control this whole thing oh is making me sick. Like it ain't doing nothing for him. Saturn no. is square, my son. That's this ain't so going to work. And it was That's just so this true. moment that taught me like, hey. A line, a line. Yes. It's not about and and also, yeah. What sacrifices are worth it? Dude, turned out was not worth the sacrifice. So that was my that was my moment of truth. Yeah. And imagine if you got what you wanted during that Saturn transit. Oh my Hello. god, dude was nuts. Dude was nuts. <laughs> dude was say nuts. That. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I have stories go. about dude. Yeah. Saturn protecting you. Okay. Yeah, yeah I love oh Saturn god, energy yeah. for that reason. Yeah, I think it's it's mm. such a it's a corrective helpful planetary figure i love it i love it so wow much. I, I mean i just realized when you said that because we started off by talking about saturn conjunct pluto squaring my chiron sextiling my midheaven in a way yeah i think it is a type of protection 100%. in a way it kind of made me go no you know what i have so much to contribute i have so much to give let me channel this yes. and i think about the weeks that followed my astrology was banging. I will say that. <laughs> was it? Okay. Okay. Wait. My what videos sense? were off the hook. My videos. Yeah, baby. yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I felt good about my videos. Let me say that. Always. I'm sure. Yeah. So that's another reason why I feel like, well, look, thank you for saying that. But I feel like me taking like a month away is going to be so good for the oh. astrology. It's going to give me more. I'm going to come back with all this energy 100%. for my audience. And, and really my audience, that's part of my spiritual journey my spiritual yeah. expression in this lifetime so it'll be really interesting to see how that how that comes together and also too nadia make no mistake you will be giving your audience permission to consider the possibility that maybe they have deserved a sabbatical and hopefully they have the resources the means and the opportunity to do it but just mm -hmm. it's that normalizing of like nadia doesn't have to like constantly dance on tables and like sing for supper and perform and output content like us having that expectation and relationship with her is actually not life affirming or life sustaining for her well being. So she's going to take off a month and let's make sure Nadia does that in peace. Oh, and where I can we do you. that in peace? You know? You so, so yeah, you're giving people permission to do that. That's great, honey. Oh, I adore you. Colin Bedell of Queer Cosmos. Well, look, you can get a lot more of Colin. You saw how brilliant he is, how he understands you made relational the astrology and all of that with his incredible class. One talk of a brilliant cohort of astrologers who are coming to the September 2022 speaker series at Synchronicity University. For a very limited time, just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate, as well as just $5 a class to learn from Colin and other brilliant astrologers. Colin, I love you. I love you too. You know how much I love you. I do. No, I have felt it since the moment we met, truly. Yeah. And just like you're always cheerleading. And I'm like, Nadia, I got your back and I'm supporting you and I'm rooting for you. You're such an example of collaborative support in this community. So, And I speak for everybody when we say we love you. So we love you.
Oh, thank you so much, Colin. You're you're just amazing. And now we're going to gush off camera for a moment. Yeah, right. But to everybody else out there, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching as well. And until we connect again, take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.